Egy szerény hang. Paula was born in Budapest, Hungary, November 19, 1897. Paula 1897-én Magyarországon született Budapesten. Paula, all of four feet eight inches tall, traveled all around the world and photographed with a Rolleiflex camera until the age of 85. Paula négy láb nyolc inch magas, körbeutazta a világot és fényképezett Rolleiflex gépével egészen 85 éves koráig. Paula was asked, "Why do you think you've lived to 100 years old?" She said, "I don't think about it. Do you worry?" She said, "I never worry about situations I can't control." I do what I can do, and then whatever happens, happens. Egyszer megkérdezték Paulát, hogy miért hiszed, hogy száz évig fogsz élni? Erre azt válaszolta, én erre nem gondolok. Miért? Ez téged izgat? Tudod, én soha se idegeskedek olyan dolgokon, amelyek nem tőlem függenek. Én csak azt teszem, amit tehet. Aztán, ami történik, az történik. So why a story about an unknown artist photographer who just turned 100 years old? In life, it's not important to be rich and famous, but to follow one's passions and live life to one's fullest potential. This is true success. Paula Wright worked really hard and lived the American dream. Tehát miért is beszélünk egy ismeretlen fotóművészről, aki most lépett életének századik évében? Az életben nem a pénz és a hírnév a legfontosabb, hanem az, hogy a szenvedélyének hódolhasson az ember a legteljesebb odaadással. Paula valóban keményen megdolgozott ezért, és megélte az amerikai álmot. A little bird flies high, flies low, titter tatter, goes slow, goes fast, no matter, home at last. Kismadár, fentszál, lentszál, csipcsirik, csipcsirik, lassan repül, gyorsan repül, mit számít az? Végül hazatalál. Hello, my name's Lauren Ellis, and I'm a friend of this lovely lady next to me. Her name is Paula Wright, and it's my honor to introduce you to Paula. She celebrated her 100th birthday on November 19th, 1997, and she's a very accomplished photographer and a friend of mine for 10 years. So I thought it would be interesting to meet her and hear what she has to say about her life and to see some of her work. And I'd like to introduce Paula. Paula, say hello. Hello. So, Paula, tell me, you were born? In Budapest, Hungary, Europe. And um, you studied art as a young girl? I went to art school for a few years in Budapest. And then I began photography and was working here in New York in first-class studios before I established my own studio. What we would like to do now, one of her most famous gorgeous portraits, Paul has a lot of work we'll go over soon, I would like to um, show you the Albert Einstein photograph. Paula, this is the most gorgeous photograph I have ever seen of Albert Einstein. And it's not because you're my friend. <laughs> it's a sparkling expression that I love. It's a candid photograph. He's thinking, he's animated. Tell us about how this came about, how you took this portrait. That uh, I was lucky to see him on the campus, the university, and he was talking to students. So it was a candid shot, and it is quite natural, of course. It was in Princeton. And you took several? Yeah. This is the only copy he signed, right? But you did take several photographs. So let's see some more of your work. Besides being a portrait photographer, Paula is also a very incredible landscape photographer. And we'll start with some photographs that you took in Hungary. Can you explain this photograph a little bit? Can you see? It, that is a Hungarian village. And the man is taking care of all the cows of the peasant people in the village. And this is lunch time for him. <laughs> and the wife is bringing his lunch, but he's just now eating. He has the dog he's taking care of the animals. In a Hungarian village, the girl came uh, from the um, taking water. She is carrying water. A Hungarian village, a poor old woman with her dog and she didn't care much about me taking a picture, so it is very natural. This is also a Hungarian village, and that's a stork. But oh, this is a Hungarian village too, with a very old, 200 year, year old, famous church. A Romanian village with two peasant people. Paul's 
traveled all over the world. I had a, right? few, a few nice trips. Do you like to travel, Paula? Sure. Indian children in Canada. Gorgeous portrait work. A woman with the child on a donkey. Not on a horse, but a donkey. <laughs> And women in Morocco don't want to be photographed. Hong Kong in 1984. Tell us about this, Paul, your trip. Yeah, yeah this is Tokyo on the main street. 1984? Yeah. It looked to me like Broadway <laughs> because very crowded. <laughs> and we're in Hong Kong still? Yes. That is a suburb of Hong Kong. It's Austria. Yeah. And it's broken. In a small town, the letter carrier. Iceland. Oh, Iceland, Paula. You went to Iceland. Iceland is most beautiful. Okay, we're still in Iceland. The lone man, the lone man, Paula. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Man with nature. Yeah. Okay, it's Greece. Mm. Beautiful architecture. 1975. Yeah, and just Greece. Greek columns are interesting. Mm -hmm. This is also very beautiful. This is also Greece. Paris, France. Kissing. What year were you in Paris, Paula? Do you remember? Oh, this that was one of my trips. Mm -hmm. But I was very glad to have this mm -hmm. picture, you know, this pose, because two young people kissing. And love is something, you know, what belongs to France. <laughs> <laughs> yes, vive la différence, as they say. Because yeah. uh, in front of the church, Notre Dame, in front of Notre Dame, yes. Jerusalem. Yeah, G Jerusalem. No, and these are at the holidays when the Jews are praying, you know. At, yes. Wow, 19th on the Bowery. Right. So this is a body character, a reflection of Fifth Avenue buildings in the lake of Central Park. Which museum, Paula? It is in the Metropolitan. Metropolitan Museum. This was taken in 1943. It's very beautiful. You really it's captured the essence. It's my favorite picture. It's your favorite picture? Why? Because it looks good. Oh. It's in um, it's Mexico. Mexico again? It is Mexico. Just what I saw on the street. The little girl's perspective. Going to church. Paula went to Vienna to learn retouching in pastels, a unique technique and in an era before color film was popular. This technique, Paula mastered in pastels, opened the door for her when she immigrated to the United States. Paula Bécsbe költözött, hogy ott kitanulja a pasztelretusálás különleges technikáját a színes film fénykora előtt. A technika, amit Paula magas fokon elsajátított, kiintotta az ajtókat előtte, amikor Amerikába emigrált. Paula came to Manhattan in the 1940s and immediately went to the best photo studios on Fifth Avenue for a position. Paula is confident about her ability as a painter, photographer and retoucher. Paula said if you don't believe in yourself, why should anyone else? She heard Fifth Avenue was the best area and the third studio she went to hired her. They not only admired her retouching, but had never seen the pastel technique. Paula 1940-ben érkezett Manhattanbe, és azonnal az ötödik sugárúton lévő legnevesebb fotostúdióban keresett állást. Paula biztos volt saját képességébe, mint fotográfus festő és retusáló. Paula azt mondta, ha nem hiszel magadba, más miért hinne? Hallotta, hogy az ötödik sugárút a legjobb környék. A harmadik stúdió, ahova bekopogtatott, állásért felvette dolgozni. Nem csak a retusálási képességét dicsőítették, de még sosem látták azt a pasztel technikát, amit magával hozott Amerikába. Paula had a tutor and learned German, Hungarian, French and English fluently. Whatever Paula wanted to study, her father would support. Paula never took advantage of his generosity. She studied at a very competitive art school, National Academy of Art in Budapest. Paula a magántanár segítségével megtanult angolul, németül, franciául. Amit Paula tanulni szeretett volna, a papája támogatta, de Paula sosem élt vissza a nagy vanulságával. Tanulmányait a nagyon neves budapesti művészeti főiskolán végezte. Hello, we're here. 
here at the New York Public Library, and Julia Van Houten has been so kind to take some time to talk about Paula's work that's in the collection that's been collected over a number of years. And Julia is the curator of photography here in the Department of Prints and Photographs. And so, Julia, give us um, some insight about Paula and your impression when you met her. Let's start with that. Well, I can tell you how I came to know Paula. I believe it. 15 years? Wow. Um, because she called me saying that she was a friend of Andre Cortez's. And right. this goes back to when Mr. Cortez was still alive, which has to be before 85. Interesting. So I think that's my first um, association with Paula. And I went to her studio. She never brings work to you. <laughs> And I visited her in her studio, and it was absolutely charming. And then we looked through lots and lots of work, and I was really quite surprised. Her work is uh, picturesque and also engaging uh, geometrically. And the range is what I found interesting. And for our collection, which is documentary at heart, it seemed a uh, natural to begin to collect her work. So we have work that begins in the 40s when I understand Paula emigrated to this country. And I think the most recent pieces are into the 80s. So we have a 40 year span of work that is street photography to some extent, and we can look at some of those pictures. And others are uh, an exploration of really what our urban environment looks like. For example, in the 1940s, Paula was just enchanted with uh, street scenes that she found here in New York that were unlike anything she had seen in Europe before. So I think that's where her camera focused initially. But she never stopped taking pictures of children. And this is 83, 40 years later. And she's Interesting. Still... She never had children, and she loves children, and she, does. she loves to photograph children. So that's one facet that I find absolutely interesting. Another is her use of the geometry of the city. In this case, the way Lincoln Center is used as street furniture. And oh, yeah. Her eye is sharp for this kind of imagery too. And uh, Her perspective is interesting because she's about four foot, um, what, four yeah. foot a little? She scrapes five feet. <laughs> five feet, oh really? Maybe. <laughs> I'm just showing, because uh, one of her favorite subjects is the uh, museum environment, interiors primarily in the city, the architecture as well as the interaction of people with architecture. And this is inside the Whitney. So she really watches out for this kind of urban opportunity. I'm just going to hold up a couple more. Mm -hmm. For example, taking Beautiful. advantage of the geometry at the, at the uh, Guggenheim. Yes, she loves the Guggenheim Museum. Most New Yorkers do, in a way. <laughs> this one too. Really, it looks like two flying ellipses. And she does more conventional street work too. Is our own front porch. <laughs> and also of uh, the, the range of work you've collected is very interesting. Well, exactly. This entire pile is um, international in scope. And it just shows that Paula has been all over the world. And we have acquired then work that is unlike the city work. It's more conventionally um, geographic and travel, where she picks out a salient detail. If I go through them like this, this is, is one way we can talk about them. I'll really just hold up my favorites. That would be great. There. I mean, she sees interesting contrasts, like the TWA <laughs> with the Morocco camel uh, donkey. She has a cute sense of humor. She does have a cute sense of humor. So do you. Oh, thank you. Now, this is one of my oh, favorites. Oh, I love this. I love it. There. It's French market. This is to me, it not only is the interesting fruits, but it's the way the people are posing, the sculptural qualities, and the humor. Excellent. I can never forget about her perspective being five foot tall. And she's so mild, and she likes to sneak up, she tells me, when she takes a photograph. She likes to kind of be inconspicuous and catch that decisive moment, so to speak. Well, and this is not to say that she abandoned Hungary for good. She did travel Beautiful. back. And this is probably her most picturesque work in the villages outside Budapest. So we've tried to acquire a whole range of Paula's output. 
and I think we've got a nice representative collection. Yes, that's interesting. And Julie and I were talking earlier about how Paula photographed Hungary after she had left Hungary and, um, and wasn't doing photography when she was in Hungary. As we mentioned earlier in the interview with Paula, she was studied painting and drawing, so that was an interesting comment of Julia's. Well, but that she's brought her artistically developed and trained eye to a whole new medium when she arrived in a new country. I, would, I think the story of how she took up photography in this country must be very interesting. Thank you so much, Julia, oh, for spending the time. Welcome. Yes, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much for this chance. Oh, okay. you're welcome. Paula, being a quiet and private person, never was obtrusive when photographing. Her interaction with people in environments was limited and distant. Even the photograph she took of Albert Einstein was a candid and distant one. In the studio, it was a different matter. She put on her professional cap and commanded the situation in her polite, soft-spoken style. Her favorite subject to photograph was dogs. Csendes, zárkózott ember lévén, Paula fotózásai alkalmával sohasem volt tolakodó. Kellő méltósággal tudta kezelni a távolságot az emberekkel. Az a fotó, amelyet Albert Einsteinről készített, egyszerű tárgyilagosságával, tükrözi azt a tartózkodást és egyben kíváncsiságot, amely Paula egész művészetét jellemezte. A stúdióban persze minden más volt. Paula felvette a professzionális művész kiállását, és az ő udvarias halk stílusában irányította a helyzetet. Kedvenc fotótémája a kutyák voltak. Paula Wright and her husband were good friends of Andre Curtez. Paula férje barátja volt Kertész Andrénak, a tehetséges és híres fényképésznek. Well, um, here we are with Mr. Weston Knapp, who's visiting New York now, and we'd like to take a few moments to have him um, talk about Andre Curtez in relation to the aging photographer, because Paula was a photographer, as we know, to 100 years old, and she was a working photographer till she was 95 years old. So Mr. Knapp has an interesting perspective on Andre Curtez, and I'd like to have him say a few words and introduce himself. Thank you, Mr. Knapp. I'm Weston Neff, uh, presently curator of photographs at the J. Paul Getty Museum, but now 16 years ago worked at the Metropolitan Museum, where one day uh, in the mid-1970s, um, a lively small woman came into my office with a box of photographs under her arm and introduce herself, introduced herself as, um, um, as a Paula Wright, a friend of André Kertéz. And since at the time I was working on Kertéz for a possible exhibition, I of course wanted to meet anyone who knew him and was delighted at the opportunity because little did I know that time would pass and that she would eclipse, would outlive all of the great Hungarian photographers um, of her generation. Of, I mean, going back to the time of Maholi Naj and, uh, and Andre Kertéz and even John Albach. And we could go on and make, a, make a, quite a long list of Hungarian people who emigrated to the United States who lived into their 80s or 90s and who contributed something meaningful to art. So I want to show first the work of Kertéz. Here is a picture that was made, he made in 1912, to give you an idea for how long his career wa was. A woman in, uh, uh, well, this is in Paris. No, actually, this is a, a picture made in Paris. Um, but most interestingly, if you could hold this, sure. Paula. Um, Lauren, <laughs> that's me, okay. Lauren, Lauren I'm, I've got to get my, <laughs> so um, Andre, continued to photograph up until the time he was 90s. And I, I want to give a sort of little late history of his work. At, in 1969, when he was about 65 years old, he made this wonderful picture of a, of a German shepherd dog and a, and a boy, uh, seen from a slightly different perspective than most. And it's interesting because at this time, Paula Wright was a photographer mainly of dogs. She was one of those rare That's people right. who established a professional practice photographing dogs. So at the age of 65, Andre Kertéz was photographing a dog. And also, Paula had an ad in the Yellow Pages advertising dog portraits until she was 95. So at the age of uh, 77, 
uh, he made this lovely study of a tabletop in Paris. Gorgeous. Looking out the window, and it's so appropriate because on the table you will see a heart. And today, mm -hmm. Lauren is wearing a red outfit because it is Valentine's Day. So nothing <laughs> more appropriate than for a person who had a bit of sentimentality, uh, as Cartes did, to be looking at his picture of a heart, a glass heart on a table on Valentine's Day in New York. And to give you an idea for how versatile he was, how, and how these people, as they get older and older, seem to get richer and richer in their experience, Cartes photographed a nude woman through a distorting mirror at the age of 80. Wow. Also in Paris, just before his work, work went there. So Paula is in distinguished company <laughs> as being the oldest at, a, at age 100 of this remarkable group of Hungarian expatriates who came to the USA and did something um, quite, quite extraordinary, added, added something quite extraordinary to our cultural life. Thank you for inviting me to come. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for giving us your time while you're visiting from Los Angeles. Also, I'd like to say just briefly that Andre Cortez said he writes with light. Paula Wright retired at the age of 99. <laughs> And Paul also does um, commercial commissions, and this is a very interesting one I wanted to share. This is a, a, a couple al an album cover and a CD cover Paula did uh, for Talking Heads. Tell us about this commission, Paula. I just got the order to make a painting of a monkey, and we were so satisfied that I got the second order of the same monkey, I think, different pose. So, Paula, say a few words about what you think of my work. <laughs> I thought that your work is very different from the average work. And Thank it was you. very very interesting and absolutely different from our work what I knew in photography. And you've done some photo retouching for Richard Avedon, a very famous photographer here. And could you please tell us what work and how you met him and what you did for Richard Avedon? I did some work for him and I got recognition. I had a beautiful uh, uh, book, his own book, what he sent me is recognition of good retouching. And also he sent his students to you. Oh, yes. And then uh, he, he sent me his employees to learn retouching from me. Her studio and darkroom were at home, and she worked many hours. Paula said she enjoyed working. She worked and had an advertisement in the Yellow Pages phone book until she was 95 years old. The studio at Yellow Pages been reclamed since 95 Hello, here we are at the New York Historical Society and with curator Dale Neighbors, who was so kind to take some time and talk about Paula and Paula's work. There's also a wonderful sort of, sort of um, inherent kind of dignity in, in the people in her photos. Mm -hmm. um, I guess especially this, this one on the Lower East Side. Um, you know, there, we have a fair bit of this sort of documentary work from the Depression. This is 44, slightly after. But um, here she's, you know, she's, it's actually a very dignified portrait of this man who is obviously um, sort of very down and out. Um, but often you get sort of an exploitive type of work. Paula didn't. Um, I think she was, she was very, you know, interested in showing him in a, in a dignified manner. Paula's often, a, there's a distance between her and the figure. Yes, she's the, like that personality-wise also. Personality. Exactly, she is. She's sort of there in the room, but not 
white in your face and you know you kind of sometimes you forget she's there type of thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not in a she's bad so little. Way. Not in a bad way. We were talking earlier about how she did very beautiful animal portraits and she did. I was kind of amused by her animal <laughs> portraits. It's such a you know again a weird kind of niche in photography. <laughs> <laughs> and, and some of them are actually kind of fun you know in a, in a sort of kitschy kind of way. Thank you so thank much you. Dale for giving us the time sure. to talk about well, Paula's work. You. And you. Paula's teacher called her a tiny bird. Being her mother was ill with tuberculosis and died when Paula was only eight years old, she was sent to live from house to house of various relatives. Paula said, if you have love, you have everything. Paula tanára madárkának betézte őt. Mivel a mamája betegeskedett, majd tuberkulózisban meghalt, Paula nyolc éves korától háztól házra költözött a különböző rokonok között. Paula azt mondta, ha szeretet van, akkor mindened megvan. Paula Wright's photographs are also in the collections of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Museum of the City of New York, and the Brooklyn Museum. Paula Wright fényképei a Metropolitan Museum, a New York Városi Museum, és a Brooklyn Museum gyűjteményében láthatók. Um, in the apartment here we're sitting, there's some photographs on the walls and also some paintings and drawings Paula did, portrait drawings yes, that you did, painting. and painting, yes. I got many letters, I have a bunch of letters like this, thanking me for portraits what I had done in painting. They're beautiful. Not in photography, but for the customers who saw my work and ordered a painting besides the photograph. Thank you, Paula. Thank you very much. Being a friend and colleague of Paula's for over 10 years and listening to her wonderful stories of traveling and photographing around the world and finding out she turned 100 years old inspired me to write and film her story with my friend and investor George Lamboy of Regal Entertainment. However famous I may be in my lifetime or after my lifetime, I will always be a tiny voice like Paula and all the artists through time, but a voice that will hopefully encourage our younger generation to work really hard and follow their dream, like Paula did, and share the healing power of their art with all. Thank you. Paula több mint tíz éven át ismertem. Barátjaként és kollégájaként számtalan gyönyörű történetét hallgathattam végig. Amikor Paula száz éves lett, Barátommal, George Lemboyjal elhatároztuk, hogy filmre visszük élete történetét. Bármilyen hírnévre is teszek szert életemben vagy azután, csupán egy szerény hang maradok. Azt a szerény hangot szeretném megőrizni, amilyen Paulájé és művésztársaié volt. Egy szerény hang, amelynek ereje reményeim szerint lelkesíti a fiatal generációkat, és arra inspirálja őket, hogy kövessék álmaikat, a művészet iránti alázattal dolgozzanak, ahogyan azt Paula tette, és vigyék tovább a világban a művészet gyógyító erejét. Köszönöm. So I did work really a long time and I always enjoyed it.